The Justice Department has shut down one of the world's most popular file sharing sites and arrested several of its executives just 24 hours after websites went dark to protest anti piracy legislation currently being considered by Congress. The seizure of MegaUpload.com triggered a massive retaliation from the hacker group Anonymous, who temporarily shut down the websites of the FBI, the Justice Department, and the U.S. Copyright Office. Anonymous also targeted entertainment industry leaders, including the Recording Industry Association of America and the Motion Picture Association of America. FSRN's Alice Olstein reports from Washington. Four executives of MegaUpload.com were arrested Friday morning and are being held without bail in New Zealand, charged by the U.S. government with racketeering, copyright infringement, and money laundering. There are warrants out for the arrests of several others associated with the file-sharing site who still remain at large. Ira Rothkin, a lawyer for MegaUpload, told the Washington Post the Justice Department did not grant the executives due process, and he's confident the site will eventually be cleared of the charges. Mega Upload is officially based in Hong Kong, but leased servers in the U.S. The site claims to have more than 150 million registered users who back up their personal data, share music and movies, and transfer large files around the globe. The Justice Department says the site has cost copyright holders more than $500 million, while its executives earn more than $175 million in illegal profits through ad revenue and selling premium memberships. The FBI enlisted the help of the governments of New Zealand, Austria, Hong Kong, Germany, England, Canada, and the Philippines in this crackdown. But many users say they only uploaded original and legal content and are turning to Twitter to vent their frustration over losing their personal files. Some are even threatening to sue the government. But Jonathan Band, an intellectual property lawyer in Washington, D.C., says they don't have much legal recourse. To the extent that innocent people were injured by virtue of the forfeiture, the remedies available against the government are, you know, there really aren't any. Band says the billions of files will likely be held as evidence for the entirety of the trial, which could take several years. There is a fair question, and I think it's an unresolved question, whether you can be criminally liable when you aren't the person who infringed, but you simply are someone who assisted the other person in infringing. There's issues about aiding and abetting, I mean, but, but, but there are a lot of complicated legal issues here that I, I think would be breaking uh, new ground. On Thursday night, the hacker group Anonymous retaliated for the mega-upload shutdown with what might be its largest action to date, temporarily disabling the websites of both government agencies, including the FBI and the Defense Department, and big players in the entertainment industry, like the Recording Industry Association of America and the Motion Picture Association of America. Two bills in Congress, the Stop Online Piracy Act and the Protect IP Act, or SOPA and PIPA for short, have also triggered an international backlash. Open Internet advocates say the legislation would legalize government censorship. Now, the Justice Department's actions against Mega Upload have some experts, including Art Brodsky with Public Knowledge, wondering why SOPA and PIPA are necessary. The whole purpose, or stated purpose, between the Stop Online Piracy Act and the Protect Intellectual Property Act was to go after these, quote, foreign rogue websites. Well, here you have a site which the U.S. government determined was a foreign rogue website. They went to court. They got an indictment. They worked with the New Zealand law enforcement. They sent the FBI down there, and they busted people. So if they can do that, um, why, why do they need a new law? Brodsky says the new bills go beyond what is legally necessary to combat Internet piracy. The problem with those bills is that private parties could basically do what the FBI did. You, know, you could have a company taking it, uh, trying to get a court order to have someone shut down a website. Though Mega Upload is down, a number of file sharing and cloud computing sites are still up and running. And the nature of the Internet allows users to create infinite ways to store and send both copyrighted and public domain materials. For that reason, Jonathan Band says any federal crackdown on internet piracy, with or without SOPA and PIPA, is misguided. All the activity that the entertainment industry is, uh, is concerned about will continue. Uh, it will just shift to another site. Uh, and that's why at, at some point uh, a lot of these actions are somewhat futile. A at the end of the day, it's a business problem. But they're looking at it as a legal problem. Rather than fight the internet, they need to find a way to use it. 
In the wake of protests on and offline, political backing for the bills has plummeted this week, with many supporters and co-sponsors withdrawing their support. On Friday morning, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid said he would postpone Tuesday's scheduled vote on PEPA. Moments later, House Judiciary Committee Chair Lamar Smith officially put SOPA on hold. Meanwhile, the four mega-upload executives in custody will have another hearing in Auckland, New Zealand on Monday, and could be extradited to the U.S. for prosecution. Alice Olstein, FSRN, Washington.